Well, hello and welcome to the Alpha Anywhere demo and q and I'm Dave McCormick here from Alpha Software, and I'm pleased to present today Sarah Mitchell, who's in charge of our documentation department here at Alpha Software. And today she's going to be going over a topic which I know is sometimes been a bit confusing to some of you, and that is publishing your applications, uh, publishing web applications, or even publishing the mobile, uh, the web portions of mobile applications. Um, today she's going to be going over the different techniques, including one in particular, HTTP Publish, which I think is going to make your lives a lot easier if you don't know about it already, uh, as well as some other topics, and we'll be here to answer your questions. Um, so just to let you know, you can ask questions, please do so. You can type them into the questions box of the GoToWebinar control panel. Also, this session is being recorded, and you'll be able to find a recording at videos.alphasoftware.com. So let's begin. Let me take you off mute. Hello, Sarah, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you, and I can see your screen. Oh, perfect. Yep. All right. So welcome everyone to today's Alpha Anywhere demo Q&A. Uh, today I will be talking to you about publishing to the Alpha Anywhere standard application server. This presentation is only going to focus on the standard application server. If you were running the IIS server, publishing process is different, but we do have that well documented on our website if you need to learn more about it. So to start off, what is publishing? When you are developing an Alpha Anywhere application in the Alpha Anywhere IDE, the component stores variables that track information such as the component's name, uh, things that might change depending on where the application has been published, um, uh, the local file system directory, that kind of stuff. And when you publish a component, all that information is uh, replaced with the actual real values that are used in the application when it's deployed to a web server. So that is one thing that happens when you publish an application. Additionally, Alpha Anywhere figures out what JavaScript APIs you are using, images and such that also need to be deployed to your application, to the web, and packages those all up into what is considered a publishing uh, package. And a publishing profile is what we use to tell Alpha where that information is going and, and what the credentials are to publish. So traditionally, if you've been with Alpha anywhere for a while, you know about localhost. Localhost is publishing directly to your computer where you are developing the application. Uh, there's another option called local area network or LAN publishing. This is a method for publishing to a computer that can be reached through the Windows file system. So if you're able to uh, add files or navigate folders through Windows file sharing on another computer on the network or even over an intranet, uh, local area network publishing works for that. And then a third one, which many people are probably most familiar with, uh, is the FTP publish or SFTP publish, which is publishing over FTP. And so these ones, I believe most people should be familiar with if you've used Alpha before. With Alpha Anywhere 4.0, however, we released a new method called HTTP Publish, which allows you to publish over HTTP or HTTPS. And the reason why uh, this particular method is of interest is that you do not need an FTP client. You don't need to open up special ports. You don't need to have Windows file sharing turned on. And you can create accounts, uh, access accounts that control who can log in and publish to the server, where they can publish on the server, and even explicitly disallow publishing for somebody who has a login. And all of, all of publishing over HTTP and HTTPS is handled by Alpha Anywhere. All that's required is that the Alpha Anywhere application server is installed and running on the remote server where you want to publish from the development environment. So we'll, we're going to get right to things here. I am going to show you how to set up HTTP publish on the application server, as well as walk you through creating a publishing profile to publish an application to the application server. So here in Alpha Anywhere, I have a small project here. It's, it's a single UX. It has 
uh, or a chart demo in it displays Google chart information and I want to publish this project using HTT publish to my Office Anywhere server which is also located here. So in order to do that, you first need to configure the Alpha Anywhere application server to allow HTT publishing. So you'll want to open up the server, uh, Alpha Anywhere server configuration on the remote server wherever it's located. And come in here and go to the other tab. And right here, there's this box. This is HTT Publish. This is where you turn on HTTP publishing as well as configure the publish permissions. So first step, you need to check this box. You must also save before you can continue further because the files needed to configure publish HTTP publish aren't created until you've saved and enabled HTTP publish on the server. So once that's done, you can create publish permissions. Publish permissions are user accounts for accessing the Elf Anywhere server. The reason we have this is because if you could just publish to the Alpha Anywhere server over at port 80 or 443 um, without any login credentials or anything. Anybody could publish to this server and put anything up here that they wanted. Which is bad, so, right? No, it's very bad. Yeah, we do yeah. not want that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just checking. Now, you had mentioned port 80 and port 443 for those people who are unfamiliar. Port 80 is the uh, HTTP port that is just usually used for regular non-encrypted uh, web traffic, and 443 is the one that's used for encrypted traffic. So just mm -hmm. Correct. All right, the default SSL port is 443. So with... <sighs> Here, I'm going to create one new user for HTT Publish. There are some restrictions on when you create these users. The username has to be at least six characters long, I believe, and can't be longer than 40. So if, if you violate those rules, Alpha will notify you that you need to, to change it. But you need to create a user, and you need to create a password for that user. And the password also has restrictions. It needs to have an uppercase letter, a number, and I believe lowercase letters, and doesn't allow for symbols. So you'll know right away if you've got your username and password correct because you won't see any error messages pop up. So after you've created the username and password for the account, you need to add a folder. And every account requires at least one folder. The folder... Uh, describes where you are allowed to upload files in the web root of the, pro of the uh, web server. Now you could create a profile that could publish anywhere and to do that you would just type in here web root inside angle brackets. But if you're working with a number of individuals or really want to just restrict potential mishaps that could occur if somebody had full access to the web root, you'd want to put a, an actual folder in here. And the folder name, it doesn't have to exist. This could be anything. If it doesn't addition, exist, when it, if it when doesn't it exist, published, it will be created on publish, yes. It'll be created, okay, great. Yeah, it'll be created on publish. So that's the other thing, is if you say someone can publish to the web route, they can create folders during the publishing process that may not exist. So I have my HTTP, HTTP demo directory that I want to publish to. And here, I also wanted to make sure that allow publish is checked. If you uncheck allow publish, you can't publish to this directory. And this is a great way to disable somebody's permissions without actually deleting the account if you wanted to prevent someone from publishing to the server. So I've created my folder, HTTP demo. I'm allowed to publish it to it with this account. I'm going to make a note of my password real quick. Because once you enter the password, you can't retrieve it. So the second I click OK, that password's now just asterisk. It's, if you go in here and edit the user, that that password's blocked out. You can't see it anymore. Okay, so I didn't see an Oh, I see how to edit. You double click on it. Yes, yeah, so you double click on the row to edit. Gotcha. Yeah, I was looking for that myself. 
So you double click to edit an existing user. Same with coming in here. If I wanted to come here and change this back to I don't want to allow publishing anymore, I would uncheck that and click OK. So in addition to configuring a user to log in or to publish, you can also specify restricted file types. And these are files that would not be allowed to be uploaded during publish. Alpha has provided a list of common executable extensions in here. You can add your own. You can disable publishing for all of these or none of them. And what happens is if, if somebody tries to publish while one of these file types is in the set of files they're trying to upload, the publish will be canceled. So they can't upload anything. OK, so the final step when configuring ACT publish on the server is to start the server or restart the server if it's already running. You can't publish to the Alpha Anywhere application server if it's not on. So I'm going to start my server. So now my server is not running. And then close. So did I, was there any questions on that process so far? No questions so far, but please just put them in. So back in Alpha Anywhere on the Web Projects Control Panel, I'm going to create a publishing profile to publish to the application server that I've just configured for HTT Publish. So if you go into the Web Project Settings, this opens up your Web Project Profiles. And I'm going to create a new profile. Here in the new Publish profile dialog. I'm going to select HTTP. It's the fourth one from the top here. We have a helpful link here explaining the HTTP option in case you forget how it works. That'll open a video that's very comprehensive. I'm um, click Next. So first things, I'm going to enter my server URL. My server is actually running on the same machine as my development environment. So to access that, I know that I need to use localhost. So my server URL is http colon slash slash localhost colon 8008. And to verify that you've got the right URL, you click, can click this test URL link. And that will pop up this window. Ideally, it will say successfully connected. If it fails, you need to verify that the URL is correct and that the application server is running. If it is not running, this will fail. Oh, cool. So that tells you whether or not there's an active alpha anywhere application server running at that address. Yes. In fact, here we can... I'll, I'll temporarily stop this one here. I'll stop my server. It's now stopped. If I test my URL now, it's going to tell me it can't connect. Excellent. So in addition to the server URL, I need my user credentials. And I really hope I remember the username. All right, so all this, this dialog here tells me that I got the username and the password correct. What it doesn't tell me is whether or not the target folder that I specify here if, whether or not I have permissions to publish to that target folder. So I know the target folder is HTTP demo, but if I put something else in here like my app or web root, this test HTTP login will not flag that as uh, invalid credentials. So that is something to remember when you go to publish is that this target folder needs to be configured properly for the for that user. So I've got my server URL, my username and password. I want to publish to this HTTP demo target folder inside the web root. That's it. I click Finish and provide a name for this published profile. It's important when creating names for profiles that you put something in there, in there that describes adequately what the profile is for. 
and and that's it. That's uh, that's how you create your profile. So after that's been created, there are a few other things you need to look at before you can consider your profile complete. Uh, a, a big one is aliases, alpha DAO connection strings, named storage connection strings, named resources providers. Failing to configure these options uh, in profiles is one of the number one uh, reasons uh, users seem to get stuck during publishing. And a big one, uh, a big offender is this alpha DAO connection string. If you use name connection strings to connect to databases in your applications, you must define a published connection string value for your application when you publish it to, out to the server. Without it, Alpha doesn't know how to connect to the database from the server. It knows how to connect to it from your development environment, but the server is in a completely different place. So if you know what the connection string is on the server, great. If you don't know what the connection string on the server is, we've added a tool in the server recently with the latest release that allows you to, to figure out how to define that connection string relative to the server. So if you go back to your server, open Alpha Anywhere application server, and go back to the other tab, there's a link here. It says open the connection string builder genie. Open that, and you can use this dialog that pops up to create a connection string that is on the server that will work with your application. So I know I have a SQL server instance running local DB that I want to connect to for my application. And the instance name is alpha anywhere. I'm going to test my connection just to make sure I plugged all this information in. It succeeded. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to copy the connection string to the clipboard. Click OK to close that. Go back in here. Edit the connection string for AA Demo Northwind. Edit the default value. Paste the connection string here. Click OK. Done. If you do not define the connection strings for your publishing profile, Alpha Anywhere will display an error message when you try to click OK to close it. So we really want you to make sure those are being defined because it's a point of failure. Your application won't work if it doesn't know how to communicate to the data from the server. And that's true for every type of publish too, not just HTTP publish. I've noticed that when I was publishing to cl the cloud the other day, as soon as I forgot to define that, I got that error as well. Yes. So it's common across all of them? It's common across all of them. It's, it's important. It's critically important. So name connection strings, aliases, if you use aliases to define locations on the file system where files might be saved, you need to tell Alpha where those files should be saved on the server. Uh, storage connections named resource providers, same deal as Alpha DAO connection strings. This is critically important not to forget that. So I have everything here that I need. I set up my connection string. My username and password and target folder are all configured. I know where the URL is. I'm ready to publish. So I'm going to click OK to save everything. So now that I have my publishing profile, I can publish my application. And we're going to, I'm going to click this Publish button on the toolbar here in the Web Projects Control Panel to open the Publish dialog. So first thing I need to do is select my published profile for HTTP. I tell it I want to publish all the files in my project because this is the first time I'm publishing. I don't have any web security data, but if I did, I would want to publish it here. And it's important to get everything up the first time so that you can do incremental publishes later. And I'm going to tell it that I want to launch the browser after my files are published just to verify that they went up there. And you'll see that I have this index A5W page defined in my project. So this looks good. I'm going to publish. And at this point, Alpha will handle everything for me. It's going to tell me what it's going to publish. You can't 
edit anything here. This is just informational. So I'm going to click OK. It looks good. And now Alpha is going to zip everything up, upload it to the server, unpackage the files, and notify me that publishing is complete. Click OK. And then it will launch my browser. And there's my published application. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have to install an FTP client. Uh, this works over HTTPS, so that's a secure, secure connection for those who are concerned about SSL. And you don't really, the only thing you need to have is Alpha Anywhere running on that server. So. Excellent. Well, hey, that is very cool. That's my walkthrough. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, well, it looks like it'll be a short uh, webinar day for us. Uh, does anyone have questions on HTTP publishing or other types of publishing? A few people have pointed out that they didn't know about the SQL connection string builder that's now on the server. I think that's pretty cool. That is, yes, that was cool. just released. I was one of those people who didn't know, yeah. I think that was released a couple weeks ago. Here's a question someone's asked, which is, are there any specific hints for publishing to a Zebra-hosted site over at zebrahost.com? Pardon? And are there any specific hints for publishing to a Zebra-hosted site? I know we've done that, a few of them. Mm. Actually, I think Chris might be on the line. Chris, are you on the line today? Let's see. Looks like he is. I'm muted. Um, my, uh, uh, my advice would be, Talk to talk to Zebra has they're really good at getting everything set up and letting you know exactly what you're supposed to do when it comes to filling in that that uh, mm -hmm. that profile. Another question is, um, can you go into any more detail about aliases? I don't know if you've used them, and if you if you can't go much more into details, can you point us to the documentation? About <laughs> aliases? Some. Actually, I'm very familiar with aliases. I've used them a lot. And, Fantastic. And uh, to give an, uh, let's just do an interactive window here. To give you an idea of what aliases are, let me see here. I'm going to go, what's the best way to do this? Local web root aliases. So an alias is sort of a shorthand way to describe a, like a file path on your computer. So C colon user Sarah documents. So here I can I can create this path here, path one placeholder basically that maps to this location on my hard drive. Except and, I think you should be using backslashes because it's DOS, not Linux. Uh, you know I don't know if that actually yeah, matters because oh, okay. Microsoft is pretty forgiving. But oh, that's cool. I will, I'll change them for you. I will make so, you feel better. <laughs> okay, so what you can do is if you have uh, like a, a location where you want to store images outside of the web root or files or something that isn't in the web root, making it a bit harder to access uh, over the web, you can use an alias to define that location. And in your code and everywhere that you want to reference that location, you can use the alias instead of the absolute path. And the reason why that is incredibly beneficial is that in my development environment, I can say it's C, Sarah, C user Sarah documents or um, some path in my um, the directory where my, my application project is stored. But on the server, I can do something completely different. I can do C, C colon slash documents. And when I publish my application, I don't have to worry about all those locations where I was referencing my user documents in my development environment because I've used the path one. So I'm going to click OK. Uh, that's OK. I'll copy this. It wants me to define all the aliases. So, let's see here. I can't remember how this works. Um, let's 
Oh, so this is how you do it in X Basic, at least in theory. Yeah. So this is just an X Basic example. And make sure I got that right. So we have a function in X Basic called file name decode. And what that does is it takes that alias, combines it with the file name, and generates the actual path to that folder. So if I take my file PDF and tell it to look in path one, this is the problem about doing this stuff on the fly. <laughs> Come on. Oh, that's not doing it for me. Anyway, um, we'll get rid of that. What it does is it, I can write my file pass using that path one alias instead of the absolute path, making my, co my project more portable is what I'm trying to get at. So does that answer the question? I believe it does, but people can write in if, if it doesn't. Um, someone asked, if you're already using FTP Publish, is it better, is it worth it to convert over to HTTP? Is there any real advantage? Provided you already have it all set up and everything, you know. I can't really think of one off the top of my head. I can't think of an advantage other than you can stop using HT FTP Publish and just use HTTP Publish. Yeah. Um, there's an added benefit of, well, you'd still need credentials anyway to do FTP. Great, okay. It's, it's oh, simpler, yeah. is the main benefit. It's just simpler. I, if it's already yeah. set up, I'd probably just use what you have. I mean, yeah. it's working. Um, so here's a, another question, actually a documentation question we've got in, which mm -hmm. is, can we get a downloadable list of every function and method and their properties, basically like a like basically the data source for how the web documentation reference section works. Like just a list of all the functions or? Straight out list, yep. We don't really provide that. Um, we probably could though. We could. It, yeah. It's a question of, of um, how I mean, easily we tap into it. it. Exactly. Yeah. I you know, know within um, the product there's a list. Yeah, right, exactly, because that's the source for, for the... Mm -hmm. the, for, the source of the documentation about. is the product. Right. Um, okay, you know what, let's take a look at that for next time and see if there's a way to, that we can pull that, because I'll ask someone. There might be a pretty easy way to actually get that information out. Cool. Let's see what else we have for questions. Oh, Chris, there you are. Sorry about that. I, I was listening through speaker, so I had to dig out my headset. <laughs> did you have a question for me earlier? We did. Uh, you've done publishing to Zebrahost before. Uh, anything in particular that someone would need to know when they're working with the Zebrahost uh, publishing? Um, or is it pretty straightforward and kind of works like all the others? It's pretty straightforward. I, I, I've been using FTP. Well, I haven't used the HTTP, but I assume that you can do the pretty much the same thing using HTTP yeah. because it's just running an alpha server over there on Zebrahost. It's just a different network location. I haven't tried HTTP uh, with one of one of our Zebrahost sites, but I would be curious to try 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 out what she just showed today and, and see how that all works. If it's any better, there's also I mean, there's also the option. If you have a Zebrahost site where you can actually do a local LAN, uh, you can actually have Alpha Anywhere running on Zebrahost, and that's even faster and even more secure, to tell you the truth, because you're right on the same server mm -hmm. that yeah. you're actually publishing to. So, yeah, there are some other options, including, like I said, the, the LAN publish and mm -hmm. what everybody's been using FTP. Right, which is sometimes clunky. Uh, it may not support passive FTP, and uh, although that may have been fixed, but... It, there's certainly a lot to go wrong. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was clunky a while ago, and I was using uh, my own FTP uh, software to FTP. That's because that's the other option is you can publish using FTP uh, using the internal, or you can use an external uh, publishing software. Right. Cool. And, and I've been using the internal because it hasn't been clunky for a while, so uh, it's, it's a little easier. It's kind of a pain. You have to go open up another software. You have to copy, then paste the URL and to, to get to the... Get to the page and then select the yeah. files and publish them up. 
It's the, not that the internals work better. Um, I use that all the time. Oh, here's someone has pointed out that, that um, they have a, something running RDP guard, which kept um, blocking them whenever they tried to FTP to Zebrahost, so that they, they gave up with the FTP. And uh, that's probably good advice there if it's not working. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I, think, I, I think I know who that is, and that's, that's where we set up his, his server. for. If, if that, that, that's probably uh, Craig that just sent that in. It is, and it's somebody else, actually. For, uh, somebody else, I, there's somebody else using uh, RDP. I'm not naming names, but uh, anyway. Okay, so so oh well, actually he's probably still sleeping. This is in Australia, but uh, yeah, they were use our, our. That's why we switched to using the the LAN uh, because they they were running RDP guard and it made it made it a pain in the butt to publish. Gotcha, great. Uh, here's just another random one and one that I'm going to answer because it's actually before your guys' time, which is documenting web apps. Is there anything for documenting web applications like A5 Doc was for desktop applications? And the answer is there, there isn't. Um, A5 Doc was a third party program that was written well, quite a while ago that was meant to look at Alpha, any, Alpha 5, uh, which is the earlier name of Alpha Anywhere, uh, desktop applications, and I actually draw you up a nice report telling you, okay, here are all the tables that are in it, here are the scripts, here, just give you a nice list. So if anyone is interested in writing some sort of third-party thing that takes a look at all the stuff inside your app, I think there's probably a little market for that if anyone is, is curious. Um, the uh, Another question that's come in is, will Alpha Cloud require HTTP publishing? So, Sarah, I'll let you field that one. Alpha Cloud has its own publishing um, setup because to get in the details, when you publish to Alpha Cloud, it's not quite the same thing. You actually, um, and what it does is it packages up your application and sends it up to the cloud. And then once it's in the cloud, you decide how it's going to run on the server. So it's like a two-step publishing process. So that has a separate um, setup completely independent of, of publishing to the Alpha uh, server. Right. In fact, I can actually demonstrate that. Let me uh, let me take control here. I was working on an Alpha Cloud thing just a moment ago. So let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, can you guys see my screen at this point? Yes. Okay, great. So um, this is what it looks like when it's finished, and it gives you a URL to open up your app, which I'll click on. So we'll do this sort of in backwards order. And I was using the security component in mind. This is that was sort of key to my little application here. But basically, all you do when you do uh, publishing from Alpha Cloud is you go up to or to Alpha Cloud is you go up to Alpha Cloud. Uh, here's where the settings are. You have to create a um, you create a publishing profile, um, just like you do with HTTP publishing and FTP publishing and LAN publishing. Once that's set up, and really the only thing you're putting in is like a username and a password. It's very, very easy. There, are, there aren't a lot more. There isn't a lot more to it because the Alpha Cloud knows where all of the uh, directories and stuff are on on the cloud where you're supposed to be publishing. And then basically, once you're done, it's just you just click publish and you choose your your profile, and it goes up. That's a little bit different. You're going to take a look. This part you'll probably recognize where it's going through and figuring out what files have changed and need to be pushed up to the cloud. But once that's done. Um, you get this thing here, this application public, publish process, where it's showing you that it's deploying the new application to the cloud. And we're going to go over this in more uh, detail in an upcoming webinar when we get more and more into the Alpha Cloud. Once that's up, um, this screen will close and another screen will open, which is this one here, uh, which is refreshed from time to time and, and shows you what's going on. It shows you that the files have been placed up on the cloud, that the files, uh, that the server knows that the, that the file, they're there, that knows what deployment it's supposed to go into. And when it's all done, this hyperlink here uh, lights up and you just click on it and open up your application. And that's all there is to it. So that is that. Um, let's see if we have other questions here. Is there a way to publish one project to multiple profiles? Uh, in that case, the same application, but to several customers on the same server. Sounds like, uh, Sarah, do you want to take that one? Uh, I think the answer is yes. Are you talking about deploying the app, talking about deploying it as like a... One, uh, one project to multiple profiles. So how do you... Yeah. Okay. Do you want to just show how that's, how you select the different profiles when you go and do that? All right. All right. Oh, I 
can show my screen. Yep. <laughs> All right. So you can you can create as many publishing profiles as you need. Um, let me get back to the web projects control panel here. Uh, web project settings. I mean, I have. I have two profiles here. One publishes my application to my system and localhost. One publishes up to the HTTP uh, demo server that I have for running off anywhere. I could add another one here that was exactly the same thing. Like HTTP demo two or something like that. Yeah, localhost. We'll do. Let's just do that. Not sure if they were if they were wondering if 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 you can do it in like a batch mode, which I don't think there is anything like that to have one. Oh, I see. Can you publish it to multiple at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's what they meant. You can do that. No. If 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 the uh, question is publishing multiple simultaneously, no. Okay. I don't know of a way to do that. We have another uh, cloud question, actually, that just came in after showing off the cloud, and that was, how do you deal with web security? And that was something I've been working on for the last couple of days, and um, I think we can, I think we'll need to improve the documentation a little bit in that area, but it turns out it's it's not very hard. Um, actually, Sarah, while you're here, could you go to the documentation and go into um, web uh, security applications as one of the cloud topics? So we do have the cloud now documented. For those of you who aren't using the Alpha Cloud and would like to, um, uh, we still have, uh, we're still, I believe, accepting some beta users who would like to test it out just before. And this is very, very late beta at this point. We're ready, really ready to go live very shortly. Um, and uh, just send an email over to guides, G-U-I-D-E-S at alphasoftware.com, and we can get you set up. So here's the documentation for the cloud, and it is managing security applications. There it is. There we go. So it really, um, the security framework that you use with the uh, standard Alpha Anywhere application server, the standalone one, and even the one for IIS, is the same security framework that you'll use in the cloud as well. There are just a couple of differences before you get started. Um, there's just a little bit of configuration that you do in a few dialog boxes here um, that basically say, yes, I'm going to use the, uh, the security framework. But in terms of setting up users and groups and page access and all of that, that happens the same way it does for the other one, which is in the web security section of the web applications control panel. The other thing is that when it comes time to manage those, if you've decided, uh, look, I'm not going to use the developer to manage those, I'd like to have an online interface to manage the, my users and what their passwords are and what they're allowed to see. Um, all of the functions that have been written uh, work for that, so you can actually use the uh, sample UX templates that come with Alpha Anywhere. Uh, to do that. And actually, let me, I'll take control of the screen again and I'll show you where that is. Or actually, you've got Alpha Anywhere open. Would you mind um, going to, uh, yeah, new UX component? Okay. Yeah, that's it. So if you could just scroll down and show off in, when you create a new UX component, you have a whole collection of security framework uh, templates. Uh, one for changing passwords, one for creating new accounts. The one that I've been using recently is that really long one there, user account and add user information to a related table. Because, it, I mean, yes, I, I do want to store the username and password. That's built into Alpha Anywhere. I don't need to set up a table for that uh, in the cloud, actually. The cloud handles that for you, and that's what those settings were that I showed you just a moment ago. But I also want to be able to keep information that's specific about that person, like their first name and their last name, so not just their user ID and their password. I also want their email and then a couple other pieces of information. So that template will actually, when you create new users, will let you write the information to two different places. The first is the web security framework tables, which are which are built into the cloud, and and also to my own tables that I set, that I give it a connection string so that I can write additional information like your first name, last name, and email, things like that. And that all works pretty well. So we'll probably do a demo on that uh, pretty soon, which would be cool. Um, hmm. I don't know the answer to this one. I'm not familiar, but maybe one of you do guys know. And is there a problem in publishing and having QNAP? 
software running. I'm not. A, I'm actually not aware of QNAP. So I've never heard of it myself. No. I have no idea. So you know what? We'll, why don't we take that one offline, and we will get back to you. Can you send that question over to guides to UIDES at alphasoftware.com? Let's see if we've got anything else here. Yep, we've got a few more. Oh, and so here's the question is, where are this uh, SQL security tables being stored when you're in the cloud, and can you manipulate those tables? So just to be really clear on the answer to that, they are being sc stored by our cloud system. So they are created for you. You don't have to create your own tables uh, or set them up like you did uh, in the standalone server, and I believe in the IAS server. Um, and can you manipulate those tables? You can, but you can you don't connect to them directly. In other words, you don't use a connection string and, and edit them like SQL data. Instead, you use the um, the X basic uh, functions that we provide you. So actually, we can I can show you a list of those, which is pretty helpful. Uh, Sarah, if you could just pop over in mm -hmm. this documentation, do a search for A5, I think it's WS underscore, and that kind of will give you the list of, uh, let me if I found them. Yeah. Do a search. Uh, You're looking for security functions? Security functions, exactly. Yeah, there we go. So here are all the things you can do uh, to those tables on the cloud. So again, not with a direct connection string, but using these X basic commands. So you can you know, see who's in a particular group. You can assign users to groups. You can create new users. You can, uh, there's, there's a litany of things that you can do here, and they're all, they're all documented here in the documentation system. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Uh, here we have a question about using Twitter digits or Google digits for, for authentication. Um, I will look into that and see where we are, uh, if, if that is currently on the plate or not. So that, that's actually a great question. Uh, and uh, someone would like to see a future in the, uh, video in the future of how to deal with online management of users. And there is something like that. It's a little bit old, but it's not terribly out of date. Uh, if you want to do a search for, uh, actually, uh, can we go to set managing security online security data? Managing online security data, right? Yeah. So I think what you're talking about are these um, how to play. Right. And if you click on one of them. Um, register new users in a web application. Okay, and if you scroll down, I recall there are some videos that go along mm -hmm. with these. These are videos right here. Okay. You just can't tell. <laughs> okay, okay, sure. Yeah. So this talks about creating an account for a new user and, yep. and how you do that using the, and this is with the template uh, that we just showed earlier using the UX. Correct. Yes. So, uh, if you need further information than that, just uh, let's see what we've got. And this and this stuff applies to cloud as well. As far as mm -hmm. creating, um, so that and that's how you create new cloud users. As far as getting your own cloud account, for now, just send an email to guides to UIDES at alphasoftware.com. When it's fully implemented, that'll be a completely automated process getting new cloud accounts. So that's it. Uh, here we have a question about progressive web apps. Um, I don't know much about that either, but we will. I can take a look at it. If you want to send me an email to guides to UIDS at alphasoftware.com, let me take a look at that. Excellent. Okay, that looks like it for. Oops. Let's see a couple more questions. Uh, there's a question about sizing applications on a mobile app. Um, when they're trying to publish, it works It works fine remote test, but when they publish to the server and access it using a smartphone, their control bars and controls are very small, can't be enlarged, and they've tried using the responsive layout settings to no avail. Um, okay, for the person who asked that, can you also send an email to guides at alphasoftware.com? Because we're going to need a little bit more information to help diagnose that one. But that might be a good one since we've just covered control part recently. Uh, we'll see if there, there's there's something that we can help you out with uh, to get you going. 
Great. So that looks like the end of questions today. Please send the questions that you didn't get to, uh, to that we didn't get to, to guides, G-U-I-D-E-S, at alphasoftware.com. Today's session was recorded, as were our previous Alpha Anywhere demo and Q&A sessions, and you can find them at videos.alphasoftware.com. So, Sarah, I'd like to thank you very much for presenting. I'd like to uh, thank you, Chris, for your help, and I'd like to thank everyone who attended, and this who asked questions especially. I hope to see you uh, next Wednesday uh, when Dion returns with another Alpha Anywhere demo and Q&A. Uh, that one will be a little bit more freeform, so um, we'll be able to take questions sort of a more broad nature then. So thanks again for attending, and we'll see you next week. Take care, and goodbye.